This is it, our last expedition of the season, investigating history underwater. For the past two weeks, we've been working with this incredible team of explorers, getting up early, preparing heaps of gear, getting systems checked and cameras ready, all for this moment, the splash. Descending into the abyss. So we are here off the coast of Lanai. This is known as Shipwreck Coast. There are a handful of shipwrecks. Many of them have been mapped to some degree. Uh, we've been getting up every morning around 6 o'clock in the morning to get out here by 6.30, 7 o'clock. We just came back from one site and we know that it has been disturbed since the last time it was mapped. They mentioned when they did map these sites about 10, 11 years ago, they did what they could do, but there are likely more wrecks potentially off the coast. So we're just going up and down the coast to see if we can identify some more sites. This is a team of educators, documentarians, and archeologists. And although in the movies, archeology span might involve fantastic hats, whips, and excavations, these explorers learn about the world in a decidedly more modern fashion. Hats are replaced with scuba gear, whips are replaced by miniature ROV minions, and we're applying the latest in high-tech archeological methods to avoid any possible disturbance of these wrecks. Well, I'm really excited to be out here in Hawaii, um, and we came out with, uh, with three main goals in mind. So the first of those is to work with the Maritime Heritage Team to document these sites using new technologies that we otherwise haven't integrated into this research. And the second of those is to be able to take that information and analyze it as a traditional archeologist would. And third, we're not here necessarily to make new discoveries as much as we are to follow up on research that has been done previously. Jason's joined by Dominic Bush, a PhD student from Eastern Carolina University who was actually born and raised here in Hawaii. He's stitching together the thousands of overlapping underwater images they collect of the wrecks. This process is called photogrammetry, which creates three-dimensional models of how these wrecks look now. These models can be compared to how they originally looked and digitally preserved for upcoming generations. Some of these sites are new to us, some are being revisited. I think we've learned a lot about the uh, transformations, the biology that's come and gone on these wrecks. Now we'll take the data back to our university in North Carolina where I'll continue to process it and then also make it publicly available on sites like Sketchfab and Nautilus Live as a part of a public outreach effort so that others can experience these sites uh, without having to get in the water and perhaps draw their own connections to this shared heritage that we here in Maui have been lucky enough to experience. The team is also joined by an underwater photojournalist who is recording the exploration and documenting the science to communicate it to a worldwide audience. I've spent the past year working with the marine archaeologists, educators, and other storytellers on this marine heritage project, and it's been incredible to be here aboard the Nautilus working together and really meeting each other for the first time, jumping in the water together, and starting to produce these photogrammetry models of these World War II era wrecks. And I am here as a storyteller, and I am documenting the science that's happening to bring it to a wider audience. Also, I worked with Ashley, our educator previously, to bring 360 videos into classrooms, and we're doing that again here. We're bringing the science to students in Kentucky at her schools in Louisville who maybe have never seen the ocean before. All three elements of Dr. Adler's work help support different styles of engagement for our world of explorers. Not just her contributions to photogrammetry and the models they produce, but also the indelible impact of an image. Meanwhile, the team gathers each night to discuss the work and their engagement goals to prepare and coordinate for the next day. This includes connecting with hundreds of students worldwide through Nautilus's Ship to Shore Interaction Program and focused engagement with the classes in Kentucky who are testing a new curriculum developed for this project. I'm an educator on board the EV Nautilus collaborating with the Maritime Heritage Team here in my mobile office. It's a wonderful opportunity to bring the work of our Maritime Heritage Team to classrooms and also not just in my classrooms in, in Kentucky but also around the world. As a mother, I think it's definitely given me the opportunity to show my daughters that the world has a million possibilities. And if you look into different adventures and different things of interest to you, that you will grow and continue to learn 
I think in the last seven days I've learned more than I've learned in many, many months. The collaboration between educators and archaeologists is important so that we can enhance how history is being taught in schools. Less rote memorizations of past events, but instead showing students that history is alive all around us and still impactful. I can say that one of the beauties of this project is the fact that we are showing people that history isn't just something you read in a textbook. It's all around us. And here in the Hawaiian Islands, we're seeing the ramifications of that history underwater. For me personally, this trip has been uh, eye-opening and monumental. I don't normally focus on World War II. This is a much more recent history than what I usually explore, uh, but it's opened my eyes to a whole new perspective in terms of what happened in the Pacific Theater, as well as testing out new models and new technology in which we can use to document sites. The archeology span we do no longer needs to be destructive. We have new and advanced technologies that allow us to document and record sites in ways that's equally as powerful without having to actually lift up these objects from the ocean floor and, and expose them to corrosive elements. Uh, more importantly, I think it's critical that we reflect on where we're at here in the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, as a, a part of the United States and this larger conversation of World War II, this is a critical area that often gets overlooked and underexplored. It's difficult to know how future generations will use the imagery and data generated on this expedition. However, we know it will provide a clearer picture of the past. Hey everyone, Sruti here, a narrator of this piece and National Geographic Young Explorer. I've been working with our team for two weeks here on the EV Nautilus, and my assignment has been to document their work. This is my first time at sea. It means so much to me because it's given me a perspective on what exploration really means. I grew up reading about Bob Ballard, Jacques Cousteau, and Sylvia Earle, but I never knew I could aspire to be like them. But now, I too am on an adventure exploring the ocean. In my role documenting our project, I'm touched by the collaboration and camaraderie between our expedition teams. Everyone here has different backgrounds, but it all comes together so cohesively. Here on the Nautilus, I realized that once you find your niche, you can chase your dream. National Geographic Society is funding this explorer-led research project and four others aboard the EV Nautilus to improve our understanding of Hawaii's unique ecosystems, inform conservation efforts, and inspire the next generation of explorers and planetary stewards.